Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Joe Carcare. Hello, thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about the advanced technology for butterfly valves and some of the release notes of our new PR actuator. A little bit about what we're going to cover today. We're going to take a look at what's new as far as uh, the PR releases and the different offerings. We'll take a look at creating the new advanced butterfly offerings, some features and benefits, also the product range of what you'll be using this PR on, some summary pages, uh, of course, a little bit about the design process and testing how we arrived at this new design, and then finally wrapping up uh, some of the neat features that we have that we've actually patented here at Belimo. As you can see right off the bat, uh, there's a cutaway on the screen of what the new PR looks like, kind of an exploded view, so you can really see some of the robust design of the gearing, the gear train, the circuit board, and of course, the uh, NEMA 4 housing. So what's new? Uh, of course, piggybacking off the PR, the on-off version that was released in November of 2016, we will be having the next release of the PR MFT version, which will be the first week in April. Uh, as you can see on the left-hand side, the PR MFT is also a UP model available in 24 to 240 AC volts and also can do 24 to 125 DC volts. Uh, it is a 160 newton meter or 1400 inch pound actuator and it also will come along with uh, 2 to 10 and 0 to 10 inputs. It also can do back net. Um, one of the other things we did invent with hand in hand with the actuator is our new 8 and 10 inch L series butterfly, both two way and three way. And on the right hand side, coming in the second week of April, will be the PKR version, which is a electronic fail-safe. Again, UP model, same torque and everything, but will have fail-safe feature. So how we arrived at some of these features was using the method we uh, uh, at Belimo called CESM. Um, and what CESM, CESM is is a concept of design that helps us stay focused on feature sets that we design a product around. Uh, and as we travel around the country, we interview certain customers and users, we take these feature sets and we categorize them in particular areas of comfort, energy, safety, installation, and maintenance. And it helps us stay a little more focused when designing a product to arrive at a product that the market actually needs and requires instead of what we think here at Belimo is a, a good idea. So CESM is the one of the concepts we use to really hone in the feature set of the new PR, thus helping us design a product that would be ideal for all the HVAC type of applications that are out there. And you can see here in this uh, water diagram some of the different areas where you would ideally find a two-way or a three-way butterfly. Uh, could be anything from chiller, um, of course, cooling towers, heat recovery, um, different boiler feeds, things of that nature. We really want to focus here at Belimo being one of the best as far as butterflies in the HVAC industry and HVAC applications. So moving on to some of these features that we arrived at and the benefits, of course, are what we hope are benefits and what were identified through CESM as benefits. Um, very simply, starting off with NEMA 4 design. Many of these butterflies are, of course, outside. So it is a NEMA 4 X housing, so completely waterproof and corrosion resistant. Um, we put things like some of the indicators, as you can see in the slide, the little orange indicators, just a kind of innovative concept that helps you find the valve location from multiple feet away uh, in a dark, you know, unlit area would help you see what your valve position is. There's a handle on the actuator. Something so simple, but very, very nice feature to be able to carry around the actuator and or the actuator and valve assembly. With the actuator removed, there's a couple of the features like the position indicator. Again, you can see here, 
Um, the linkage that we designed is a two-bolt design. So as far as installing the actuator, very simple. There's only two bolts to tighten up. They are captive bolts, as you can see, so they won't fall out on you. Uh, you can mount the actuator either 12, 3, 6, or 9 o'clock. Uh, of course, the coupler, as you can see in the picture, has a little flat on it and a little groove signifying where the disc location is. And the flats can be used with some sort of an adjustable wrench to open and close the valve manually if, if you had to do that um, prior to install. Uh, another thing we focused on was as far as the height and weight comparing to our previous SY actuator. You can see it was quite a bit taller. It also required quite a bit of room to remove the cover. With the new PR series, we made it much smaller. And I'll show you in the next slide, the covering that has to be removed for wiring is much, much smaller. So this would really help in aiding mounting close to a ceiling or close to a wall. Of course, um, we made it very light. Some of the housing is made out of either cast aluminum or high density plastic. So quite a bit lower as far as the weight goes. So carrying this thing around will be a lot easier. Uh, we also even made it available in some cases indoors to be mounted upside down, which is also a nice feature compared to our previous SY. In speaking with the easing wiring, as I mentioned in the previous slide, you can see here there's a small cover that has to be removed and is attached by a tether so you wouldn't lose the cover. Um, it needs hardly any room to remove, and that's the only cover you would have to take off to access the wiring. Once the cover has been removed, as you can see on the right-hand side of the slide up here are the terminal blocks. Um, the first set is the auxiliary switches followed by the power, and the next set would be the control, back net, and temperature sensors. So again, all everything you need for wiring would be right underneath that cover. Uh, also in the picture would be the MFT port, and of course the LEDs that let you know if you have power and status, etc. So a uh, point to mention, when the wiring is complete, you would put the cover back on and make sure it's tight to keep also with the NEMA 4X waterproofing. OK, looking also at some of the features again, the position indicator, there's adjustable end switches. Every PR comes along with two auxiliary switches, end switches. One is set at 10 degrees, which is a default, and locked at 10 degrees. The second one will come from the factory at 85 degrees, but it is adjustable from zero to 90 degrees just underneath this little waterproof covering. You would simply take the hand crank, which is attached on the side of the actuator, remove it, open the cover, set your valve position with the manual override, and then with power off, putting the hand crank into the second cover and setting the switch, and then re putting, replacing and putting the covers back on again to keep up with the NEMA 4X. Um, a mention as far as the manual override, uh, it works very similar to an HOA in the way where when the override hand crank is placed in, the actuator will not move or respond to signal at all. It still will be powered, but the actuator can sit there until the manual override has been removed. And again, just remember to put the covers back on and tighten so they will continue to be waterproof. A really nice feature that we're excited to introduce to the market is NFC technology. Um, the actuator comes with NFC technology inside, along with a downloadable app you can get currently from the Play Store for Android only at the moment. And you would simply attach your phone to the NFC, make sure your NFC has been activated on your cell phone, and you would simply touch it to the actuator with power off and could do different things as far as looking at the runtime, the speeds, um, you could do a lot of your settings as far as the position off or your fail position for your actuator, for the electronic fail safe, control signal, 2 to 10, 0 to 10, 4 to 20. You would also set up your back net and the addressing and all the um, IP addressing would be through the app. And of course, 
on the last screen, we're showing you some diagnostic features. So if you wanted to come up to the actuator a few months after startup, you could really see how many direction changes it had, starts, stops, any possible overloads, etc. As I did mention, currently the app is available in the Play Store for Androids only. Uh, in the near future, we will have a iOS app that would be for the Apple phone, but would require a little Bluetooth uh, gateway that turns NFC to Bluetooth since the iPhone is not NFC capable at the moment. So I would look forward to that sometime in the May timeframe for the iOS app along with a little gateway. The electronic failsafe, again, this is the PKR version, uh, the K for the capacitors. Um, electronic failsafe has different features as far as changing the runtime. Um, you can change uh, the factory positions as far as where it fails, normally open, normally close. You can even do a midway set point as far as a 50% fail position. Maybe on a power failure, you want to have the actuator fail at 50% and still guarantee some flow. So all of these features can be done in the electronic fail safe version. Uh, as you can see, it's slightly taller than the PR, and up top here is where the capacitors reside. Um, you simply power it up. In about a 20-second charge time, the capacitors are ready, and the actuator will program and run properly. Power consumption, this is another, uh, another real hot topic. Uh, of course, with energy prices on the rise, things like energy consumption are very important to us at the LIMO. We've made the actuator require approximately 80% less power um, than it needed for some of the SY offerings we had prior to that. An example would be the PRUP and the 24 volts would require roughly about 19 VA transformer, thus allowing you to run up to four PRs on a single 99 VA transformer, keeping within phase two. So real important for us to have that lower energy consumption. All the energy consumptions that are on the actuator or on the technical information are all based on with the heater being on, so not to worry as far as you need to calculate higher VA ratings. And I'll speak a little bit as far as the heater when it is on and when it is off later on in the presentation. This is just a quick snapshot of where we are today and where we're heading. Of course, as you can see, the PR, the on-off and floating version, released November 2016, and some of its feature set. Uh, again, like I spoke about, the PRMFT would be available the first week of April, and the PK would be looking for that as a release in the second week of April. And you can see the feature set as far as run times, the torque, the adjustable end switches, all three have NFC, which versions have fail safe, which versions have BACnet, and soon to have Modbus this year. And of course, a feature that we didn't speak about yet is the passive sensor inputs. Both the MFT and the PK have two inputs for passive sensors, which would go along nicely with some of the Belimo sensors that we'll be offering soon. Things like the PT-1000 or the NI-1000 would work nicely as far as temperature control on, say, a cooling tower. Uh, just to keep in mind, it has roughly a plus or minus 3% accuracy as far as the sensor inputs. So a snapshot of all the different features. Again, easy installation with the two bolts, the less energy consumption. Um, of course, the intelligent self-adjusting end, end stops we'll speak about in a moment. Uh, the reduced height, adjustable runtime, 0% leakage, all the butterflies are a 200 PSI close off. NFC technology, of course, where you can set all your different settings as far as runtime and fail safe, the electronic fail safe model, universal power, um, BACnet protocols, MSTP, of course. Uh, you'll be able to do different BACnet features. There's about 20 different objects you'll be able to see with the BACnet relative position, input, output, set different alarms. So that's a nice feature you could use, again, through MSTP. Um, the flexible indicators. Um, five-year warranty now on all the 
HD and L series butterflies that use PRs, DRs, etc. Um, the smart heater. Uh, one advantage of the smart heater is that it's only used when it's necessary. If the temperature drops below roughly 65 degrees or there is 85 percent relative humidity in the actuator, the heater will turn on. When neither one of those conditions are met, the heater will turn off, thus saving energy. So that's how we're able to get to that 80 percent less energy consumption. The product range, of course, the PR will be available on the 4 to 10 inch butterflies. And again, the 4, 5, and 6 are our HD series. And the 8 and 10 are our new L series that has a lower torque requirement. And of course, the 2, 2.5, and, and 3 will continue to have other Belimo actuators. And just a quick note that coming in April, the HDU series will be phased out and the HD will take its place as our standard. A little bit about the design, how we, how we arrived at this design. Again, when we started to look at a butterfly, how butterflies are designed, how we've designed butterflies in the past, we came up with many different concepts of how to come up with a low torque actuator and a low torque valve. And thus, we went through the different design criteria, and we arrived at a certain uh, range that would help us focus on this valve. From doing that, we did other testing to find out how a butterfly really works, how it starts off with a high torque. It seems to level off in the middle of its range, and again, it rises again, and especially over time, the torque requirements also rise. Through the design and testing, we arrived at a ramp design on our liner. What this allowed us to do was to have a certain amount of torque as it enters and then calculate the torque requirement as the valve got, gets older. Thus, collectively, with the actuator and the valve design, we were able to come up with an optimized valve and actuator system. And what does that really mean? To us and as far as the industry, what you have here is an actuator and a valve that knows exactly where it is. As the valve starts to travel and the actuator is traveling, it hits its end point and the actuator knows it's at 0% and it's fully closed. As time goes on and the liner starts to wear, that's this orange line here, the valve is traveling along. It notices it's somewhere before zero, but the actuator hit its for its its final torque at 160, it also knows it's closed. And we can ensure full close off, even though we're not at full zero. And again, as things wear, time goes on even further, what you find here is that the actuator realizes that it's at 160 newton meters and it's at zero, or not quite at zero, it's out of the scope. And it says, something's not right, this valve is not closed all the way. And from there, you could actually set a back net alarm. So this feature would allow us to monitor the close-off on this valve at any given point over the life of that valve to ensure 200 PSI bubble-tight close-off. It also works very well as far as on uh, other competitor valves for retrofit. So with that being said, between the design of the new actuator and the combination with the ramp design of the valve, we're applying for some patents on a full butterfly combo and a system. Um, the hand crank detection like we spoke about, the smart heater as it turns itself on and off, um, the adaptive position of the actuator, and of course that uh, slant design of the, uh, the liner. All of these different feature sets are going to be patented. So we're very excited to introduce this actuator and valve system to the market. And with that, I thank you very much for your time. Okay, we do have a couple of questions for you, Joe. Will the PR be available on other valves? Yes, we're starting with the HD and the L series for April, and then looking to expand the line for our high performance, our Vitalik butterflies, as well as ball valves that we offer the SY currently would also get the PR. So I would look for that later on throughout the year. Um, will the PR be available on dampers? Um, this is also something we're looking at. 
possibly making a clamp mechanism where we could put the PR on large round dampers. Um, so nothing as far as released yet, but we are looking into that to see if we can put PRs on dampers, absolutely. Can the MFT version of the PR be programmed for on-off control? It can. All, all the MFT versions, whether the PK or the PR, can do on-off or two position, floating point, as well as 2 to 10, 0 to 10, and 4 to 20. So all the control signals you would need. All right. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for that excellent presentation, and thank you all for participating in today's webinar. Have a great day.